Welcome to your daily dose of theological German, where a sentence a day keeps the dissertation detractors away. I haven't said that in a while, and I'm sure some of you are wondering what happened to our signature line. Anyways, we are on installment number eight of uh, the cult theology of the letter to the Hebrews. Beforehand, verse 16 following referred to the new covenant with words out of Septuagint Jeremiah 31:33. So this is a pretty straightforward sentence, and uh, that's okay, though. I think it's good to sometimes just review some of the really rudimentary stuff about how you go about deciphering a sentence in German, especially if you're just studying for your first kind of theological German exam in whatever degree program you happen to be in. So let's just do the basics here. We need to find a subject, an object, and a verb, ideally, and then we need to deal with whatever else might be left in the sentence and how it relates to that. So let's uh, let's start with that. Well, of course, you know that verbs in German should be in second position. So the first thing you see in this sentence is this kind of discourse marker or this uh, preposition. So that's your first thing, which means the next thing to occur is the verb, and it's recognizable as a verb in other ways as well. You'll notice that it has this t ending on it, which is a dead giveaway that you're looking at a past tense verb. At least that's going to be most likely. Um, I suppose it's possible that it could be something else, uh, but that's most likely that it's going to be a past tense verb, and so then you would want to just get it back to the infinitive form, which is going to happen just by putting the en ending back onto it. And so uh, it's really hard to write with your finger on a screen, FYI. Avenin is what you're going to look up. So you look that up, you see it means something like uh, to mention or uh, to refer to, uh, make reference to, or something like that. And so once you've got that sort of figured out, then you can put that into your sentence and then you want to figure out okay well if that's the verb what's going to be the subject and you should know that based on word order in cases where the subject is not the first thing in the sentence then the subject typically should come immediately after the verb and so you actually want to pick up verse 16 following as the subject of this sentence and so actually that's important to note in this case because I mean normally a subject would be a noun which would be declined as nominative and so that would give you some extra help in figuring out what the subject was here though you obviously can't make a difference between nominative, accusative, dative, whatever it is, with something like verse 16 following in abbreviated form like that. And so really uh, the word order is the main thing that tells you that's got to be the subject. Okay, so verse 16 following makes reference to, and now you just need an object. And so the next thing in the sentence here is this prepositional phrase beginning with mit, which it's possible that verbs don't take an actual accusative object, that they might just be complemented by a prepositional phrase of some kind. But in the context here, that wouldn't really make sense to think about uh, making reference with something. Uh, doesn't really complete the thought. And furthermore, you have this other noun down at the end, uh, this kind of nominal phrase that you need to account for. And so you'll notice that this preposition, den, is indeed the accusative singular and since bund is a masculine singular noun den is the accusative uh, singular pre uh, sorry did i say preposition i meant definite article for um for masculine nouns and so you know this has to be accusative and so you know this is going to be your object so you kind of have the basic structure then verse 16 and following refers to the new covenant okay and then you just have to put in your prepositional phrase which just kind of gives you some adverbial modification saying how it refers to it it refers to it with uh, words out of or from septuagint jeremiah 31 33 and so the last thing you got to deal with here is this zuvor if you had simply vor then that would just mean before zuvor is kind of a compound preposition and you can look it up in your dictionary and you'll get lots of different examples of how it might be used. But um, I think intuitively you can also just kind of see, well, it's kind of related to before, uh, but it's before uh, with reference to something else, which was what was stated in the previous sentence. And if you recall from yesterday's sentence, uh, the author has just pointed out that Hebrews is explicitly on some topic at a certain point in the text. And so you can see here that this is just going to be referencing before that explicit marking of the topic. So that's why I translated it as beforehand, which is kind of a similar thing in English, where you take the preposition before, you add something else to it to kind of give it 
more of a discursive nuance to make it connect uh, to the rest of the text in some way. So anyways, I hope you found that helpful. Uh, it's a pretty basic sentence, but it's good to go through those basic ideas. As always, thank you for watching, and please do subscribe and like and share this with all of your theological German friends.